Well, welcome to All My God Ministries. I am your host, Reverend Anita Morris. I will be coming to you before you with the book of Hebrews. Also, regarding coming through boldly to the throne of God. And also, the Hebrews, the mention of the Hall of Faith. You know, like how we as a society, we have the Hall of Fame, Rock Hall of Fame, R&B, you know, all this different kind of Hall of Fame. But we want to talk about the Hall of Faith. So these are memorable people of the biblical text in the Old Testament. You can glean from that had faith, great faith, in such a time as this of, of adversity and areas of concern of our own personal intimate needs as well as the needs of our country at this time of government shutdown it's causing us to stretch more than what we need to stretch in finances or resources and it's also helping us to bridge and reach out more than what we needed to do in our scope of personalities if you're an introvert sometimes you may not want to communicate what you need if you're an extrovert, you might tell too much of what you're lacking or what you're, you are lacking. But I tell you this, in Hebrews chapter 4, it says we can come boldly to the throne asking help in time of need. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, that you rescue, you deliver, you provide, you help, and you provide a refuge. And you do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. So today, we come before you and asking your help in any areas of our need. We ask you that you will bring a great calm. And also, we ask you for the resources that you will, you will put in play for us and for our needs. According to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So the Hebrew text in chapter 4, verse 16, it reads, Let us then fearlessly, not in intimidation, but courageously, fearlessly, and confidently, and boldly draw near to the throne of grace. And I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. The throne of God's unmerited favor to us sinners that we may receive mercy for our failures wherever you're coming up short and find grace the ability to do God's will that was a theme in my tradition faith tradition of charismatic Bible fellowship grace is the ability to do God's will to yield to his direction that you might find grace that sense of yieldedness in your spirit to help you in good time for every need that's appropriate help and well-timed help coming just when we need it. So that's what we're asking God, just when we need it. As we see and view the internet, as we see and view the news of how many government employees, over 800,000 government employees on furlough, requesting GoFundMe page um, funds to provide for their families, their children. And I so appreciate those who have advocated and those who are helping these government employees to live and to have a quality of life where they're not snuffed up and behind in their mortgage or utility bills or food and providing food and clothing um, for their children, which hinders them to be of responsible adults, not their fault due to their own, but due to government shutdown. So we need to, as a people, continue continuously keep in mind to let us go courageously without fear and confidently, boldly, boldly draw near to God and ask for his help. Okay? That's in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. Now, this is the great examples of faith. When we read about faith, we want to, I want to mention some perspective of faith. As I was reading, and I am still reading, 
this remarkable book by Tessa Afshar and it's called Pearl and the Sand and she does an extra biblical text of Rahab if you read in Rahab about um, in the book of the Old Testament where they're crossing over to Canaan and you read in the book of Joshua it's right after Deuteronomy and you have Joshua and Joshua is or was I could say is if you read in the biblical text as it is was the assistant to Moses okay and he had the mantle to go forward because Moses couldn't go into the promised land because of course if you are familiar that God had um, provided consequences when he was supposed to speak to the rock and he struck the rock and he said you will not enter the Canaan or the promised land so Joshua out of those who lived others who were rebellious did not see the promised land they had to wash out a whole generation and that's probably amount to 40 years but Joshua and Caleb was able out of that generation to go and conquer and to have the promise realized in their lives of being conquestors in the Canaan land and within that direction that's when we're told about the Rahab woman who had been a prostitute okay who in Joshua when you look at Joshua chapter 2 it says then Joshua secretly sent out two spies from the Israelite camp at Achia Grove he instructed them scout out the land on the other side of the Jordan especially around Jericho and as you remember Jericho they had to march around seven times before the walls came trembling down I'm getting ahead of myself excuse me but they were to scout out the land and especially around Jericho so the two men set out and came to the house of a prostitute named Rahab and stayed there that night and as we just celebrated Christmas the birth of Christ okay and we're still in the um, liturgical or liturgy of infamy the weeks leading after Jesus birth and his arrival but you can tell by the ancestry of Jesus Rahab was also in the genealogy of Jesus. If we look at Matthew, he does the uh, genealogy of all the women who were in Jesus' um, descendants or his um, genealogy. So it reads and In Matthew chapter 1, verse 5, Salmon was the father of Boaz, okay, whose mother was Rahab. As we know, Boaz was married to um, Ruth, okay, which was a Moabite. And now, Salmon was the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Now, Rahab had been the one in this text according to Joshua was a prostitute who allowed the two scouts from J Joshua's army to come in to scout the land she took him in and this is what she says in verse 2 of Joshua Joshua chapter 2 but someone told the king of Jericho some Israelites have come here tonight to spy out the land so the king of Jericho sent orders to Rahab Bring out the men who have come into your house, for they have come here to spy out the whole land. So they were on watch of the, the, the Hebrew soldiers. And Rahab had hidden the two men, but she replied, Yes, the men were here earlier, but I didn't know where they went. were from. They left the town at dusk. As the gates were about to close, I don't know where they went. If you hurry, you can probably catch up with them. Actually, she had taken them up to the roof and hidden them beneath bundles of flax 
she had laid out. So the king's men went looking for the spies along the road leading to the shallow crossings of the Jordan River and as soon as the king's men had left the gate of Jericho was shut. Before the spies went to sleep that night Rahab went up on the roof to talk with them and she replies I know the Lord has given you this land she told them we are all afraid. Everyone in the land is in living in terror for we have heard how the Lord made a dry path for you through the Red Sea, but it's called Reed Sea, or the, the Dead Sea, the Reed Sea of Reeds, okay? When you left Egypt, and we know that what you did to Shion and Og of the two Amorite kings east of the Jordan River, whose people who completely destroyed, you completely destroyed. So they heard of the fame of Israelites' God, the Hebrew God, yad he vah that he was able to advocate for the poor and for those who were oppressed. And the children of Israel were being oppressed and the Lord made a way out of no way. And it says, no wonder our hearts have melted in fear. No one has the courage to fight after hearing such things. For the Lord your God is supreme, God of the heavens above, in the earth below so she acknowledged the God of eternity the Hebrew God and acknowledged his power his fame and she writes and she exclaims in in the Joshua 2 verse 12 she exclaims to the Hebrew men now swear to me by the Lord that you will be kind to me that's that has it loving kindness as we see what's going on in the world of government shutdown, now people are advocating to show love and kindness. And I'm sure there will be other people who say, I showed you kindness. Now, when you are able and you get up on your feet, now promise me you'll do good. You'll return the favor by return, basically paying it forward. Help somebody else in your time, in your lifetime. And she asked, she goes, now swear to me by the Lord that you will be kind to me and my family since I have helped you. Give me some guarantee. She's not a foolish woman. She wants to make sure you guarantee her. Guarantee me your safety. And the men agreed, if you don't betray us and don't go squill and go and rat us out, we will help you. Okay? Along with my father my mother and my brothers and sisters and all their families she had advocated for her whole entire house she wasn't selfish she wasn't just looking at for numero uno her the only person she had others in mind she had her mother her brothers her sisters and all her family members to be saved and rescued and to acquire the compassion that she heard about the compassionate God of the Hebrews that will save those who are afflicted and oppressed and then the Hebrews Soldiers mentioned, we offer our own lives as guarantee for your safety, the men agreed. If you don't betray us, we will keep our promise and be kind to you when the Lord give us this land. And of course, you know they kept their promise. As we see in Matthew, we read in the Jesus genealogy of the ancestors of the Messiah, Yeshua Messiah, where Solomon was a follower of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. So... The Pearl of Sand, which is by Tessa, she does an extra biblical and brings imagination to the scene where you're not reading the Bible dry, but you have some illustration going on. But we're in a time in our lives where people are being kind in such a, a chaotic world, and we don't want to leave out um, your act of faith of applying for a job or a second employment it's going to take work it takes humility um and it takes the fear of the lord but i pray that you will be boldly to ask and cry out for god's help your your posture will be asking god's help his guidance as you move in about your daily work days that he will open the window open windows not just one but windows for an opportunities or or several opportunities for you to decide which career or what employment that you wish to take and 
be offered that job and then have sustainable income in the midst of such travesty that has hit our nation. And so pray for our governments, pray for our leadership, pray for the President of the United States, pray for the legislative branch, the judicial branch of our Congress of the, of the United States. So we want to keep that in mind that God said, I will show compassion upon whom I show compassion and I will show mercy upon whom I have mercy. I always keep that in mind because God has no respect of person. He sets one up and he, he sets one down. So I just believe in God's time and that he'll orchestrate and align everything to its perfect will for our entire lives, our holistic lives, mind, body, soul, and spirit. So this may be a time of testing our faith and character and see what what fight do we have inside of each of us and how are we going to weather the storm and endure okay so these are some great examples of faith if you would read in hebrews chapter 11 it says faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen that is in a new living translation of hebrews chapter 11 so if you are going out and to do a, a big exploit for God, something that you want to accomplish and say, well, I want to give God the glory. You don't see how it's going to happen, but you believe that it will. Just like as I opened my business, I, don't, I didn't see the dollar signs. I didn't know how to go about to reach the income that I need. But every day it's a practice of my faith into action that what I believe will take place will happen. And it says it gives us an assurance about things we cannot see. Through their faith, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. Even by Rahab, when you look at that story, she took the men by faith. And she received the troops, the two soldiers, to spare her life. That by faith, she believed that she herself, her family members, her brothers and sisters and relatives were to be rescued. She believed that. And it says, by faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command. Just like when you read in Psalms 8, Psalm 8, right? In the book of Psalms. If you read Psalm 8, it reads, God set the boundaries of the oceans and said they have limits so they won't destroy. And oftentimes, of course, we see um, torn not just tornadoes, but you see, um, what do you call it? Uh, storm surges that does destroy homes and etc but the gist of it that there's boundaries set for oceans and for different continents of the world what of God's creation okay and that we now see did not come from anything that can be seen so those that God created we can see that it couldn't be created by us human hands it was by faith that Abel, Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God than Cain did. Now Abel, in the Old Testament, when you read in Genesis, and Cain, these were the first um, children born to Adam and Eve. And they were able to give an offering. Abel's offering gave evidence that he was a righteous man. And God showed his approval. Remember, God has compassion upon whom he showed compassion. Of his approval gifts although Abel is long dead he still speaks to us by an example of faith so therefore that is an example of an expression of Abel's faith that he brought a more acceptable offering um, it was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying so oftentimes when you read in the illustrations that the biblical text text give Enoch was not he went to be with the Lord that means he was caught in the heavens he disappeared because God took him for before he was taken up he was known as a person who pleased God amen I'm sure that's all of us who are of the faith and believers of Christ and God and Christ Jesus want to be taken up and not see death I'm sure that's all of our desires it says and it is impossible to please God without faith so it says first Anyone who wants to come to him must first believe that he is God. And he is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. So for God to reward your faith and to 
approve your faith, you must believe that he is. So even Rahab, she had mentioned that I heard about your God. I heard how he destroyed the Egyptians. I heard that he made a path in the waters and made a dry ground so you guys can come across the Reed Sea. I believe that. And she believed just by the, the message, by oracle or oral history. Okay, we don't really have to see it, but we can have an unction and to believe. You know, and even Jesus in the New Testament said, Blessed are those eyes who don't see, but yet believe. Can you believe even though you can't see? And that's where God has taken us. We don't see our way out. We don't know what's going to happen the next day or six weeks from now. But you know what? God said, can you trust me? Can you be obedient in the things I'm asking you to do in this season? And it says, it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. It was by faith that, number one, Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. It was by faith. He obeyed God who warned him about things that had never happened before. Okay? So imagine something has happened here and someone take upon themselves to warn us and we don't heed that warning. But yet they live and we die. That would be a shame. But it's by his faith Noah condemned the rest of the world and he received the righteousness that comes by faith. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home, his place of residence, where he grew up, what he known, what he was, um, what do you call it, attached to, okay? To leave home and go to another land that God would give him as his inheritance. Go somewhere remotely he never even heard of, have no vetted interest in, but God will give him an inheritance there. He moved by faith, by what God said and what he mentioned. He went without knowing where he was going. And even when he reached the land, God promised him he lived there by faith. So each day of needs, as we read God's word, it says, give us this day our daily bread. Okay, that our daily needs, our daily nourishment. And he was living each day by faith, even as the children of Israel was led by a cloud by day and a fire by night, daily substance. And that's why you shouldn't allow your faith to run stagnant. We have to continue to sharpen ourselves in the practice of our faith, what God is doing in this season. Therefore, we must live by faith for every day. It says, even when he reached the land God promised, he lived there by faith. He wasn't there by repetitive and saying i'm gonna re receive this you know i have it already interest i know it's 20 years from now i'm gonna receive this investment for the next 20 years some people receive that and they can bet on that and they will stay there forever <laughs> but abraham had none of those in line working for him and even when he reached the land okay he stayed there by faith, for he was like a foreigner, okay, living in tents. Again, it goes back to what we see and realize in this society. So did Isaac and Jacob, who inherited the same promise, so they did and lived by faith. So did Isaac and Jacob, which was born to Abraham and Sarah. Abraham was confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundation, a city designed and built by God it was by faith that even Sarah which is Abraham's wife was able to have a child though she was barren and was too old some people have been expired or have expired in their fertility or according to the doctors have reached their decline and the doctors mention that you are no longer able to produce children but I tell you by faith even Sarah was able to have a child though she was barren was told that she would as an angel of God gave it to her and she believed 
So believe God, sisters and brothers, okay, that God will keep his promise. In verse 12 of chapter 11, continuously, it says, So the whole nation came from this one man who was as good as dead, which is Abraham and Sarah, right? A nation with so many people that, like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore, there is no way to count them. All these people died still believe in what God had promised them. They did not receive what was promised, but they saw it all from a distance and welcomed it, embraced it, okay? Just like how when you are given inheritance, you pass it to one generation to the next, but embracing that promise that one of these days it will come to fruition. It will speak, okay? That agreed promise that God has put in place will come to pass. They agreed that they were foreigners and nomads here on earth. Obviously, people who say such things are looking forward to a country they can call their own. Just like how we say, we're just passing through. We're all strangers and sojourners here on earth. We're just passing through. If they had longed for the country they came from, they could have gone back, okay? But they were looking for a better place, a heavenly homeland. Homeland security, okay? That is why God is not ashamed to call, be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. This is for all the people of faith. God has prepared a homeland security for you. It was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him, but provided a ram in a bush. Okay, so that means the ram became the sacrifice and not his child. Abraham, who had received God's promise, was ready to sacrifice his only son Isaac by the testing of his faith, even though God had told him. Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. Abraham reasoned that if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life again. So no matter what, it's in God's hands. Whatever you choose to do, it's in God's hands. In the sense, Abraham did receive his son back from the dead. So basically, he was hopeless in despair. And that despair of God providing the ram in a bush revived him, refreshed him, and had regained hope. It was by faith that Isaac promised blessings for future to his sons, Jacob and Esau. Okay, these are the twins. Okay, it was by faith that Jacob, when he was old and dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons, the crossover blessing okay and bowed in worship and leaned on his staff it was by faith that joseph when he was about to die said confidently that the people of israel will leave egypt i see it coming you can pro proclaim it if god has given you a vision beloved proclaim it so others can hear and to rely on what god is speaking to you to journalize journal it and to write it down he said he even commanded them to take his bones with them when they left because he believed that they were going to leave Egypt, but did not want his bones. He was government of he was the governor second to the president of Egypt, and he said, "I have a promise, and I believe, and I have seen revelations that God will take us and deliver us from the oppressor of Egypt." And so, it was by faith they removed and took the bones when they went and left Egypt and was delivered from Egypt. And verse 23 of chapter 11 of Hebrews, it says, It was by faith that Moses' parents hid him for three months when he was born. They saw him, they saw that God had given them an unusual child of distinction. And they were not afraid. Just like how God said, Come boldly, fearlessly, do not be afraid. Oftentimes you see that in God, in Christ Jesus, in the New Testament. He says, do not be afraid, have faith, you know, meaning calm, relax. I am God, I am he, okay? And they were not afraid to disobey the king's command to honor and to preserve the life of Moses, okay? It was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh. And it was by faith Rahab the prostitute, I'm skipping to 31, was not destroyed with the people in her city who refused to obey God, for she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. God bless you and live by faith. We do not walk by sight, but we live by faith. So continue to live 
Bye, Faith. God bless you.